We're about to shift from working in the logical language SL to another language called quantified logic, or QL. Consider this argument. Everyone will get ice cream, therefore Sally will get ice cream. In English, if you think about it, this is obviously a valid argument. It's impossible for the premise to be true, but for the conclusion to be false. Sally is among the people, so if everyone is getting ice cream, then she must be. If we translate the argument into SL, we need a symbolization key. We can let E mean everyone gets ice cream, and S mean Sally gets ice cream. The argument then becomes this, E, therefore S. Because the sentences are so simple, the truth table is really, really easy. Remember that an argument is invalid in SL if we can find a row in the truth table where the premises are 1 and the conclusion is 0. The second row is like that, showing that this argument is invalid in SL. So SL gets the wrong answer here. Look closer at the second row, though. Here, E has a value of 1, it's true, and S has a value of 0, it's false. Given what E and S are supposed to mean, that combination really isn't possible. If everyone is getting ice cream, then Sally must be getting ice cream. The problem is that, in SL, E and S are atomic sentences. So, even though we used them to translate things that were related in English, the connection is entirely lost in SL. If the English sentences that we translate with sentence letters are not independent, then SL goes a bit haywire. When this happens, there may be rows of truth tables which do not correspond to ways that things could possibly be. That means that SL can identify an argument as invalid even though it's the translation of a valid English language argument, like the example we've just seen. So we'll develop a new logical language, which represents more of the structure of English sentences. We'll call the logical language quantified logic, QL for short. In QL, capital letters represent predicates that say something about an object. Lowercase letters are constants that name particular objects. We can translate the argument from earlier in this way. Let ix mean x gets ice cream, and let little s be Sally. Then the argument becomes for all x, ix, therefore is. Although it will be a little while before we can show that this is valid in QL, it should already be clear that it represents more of the structure of the English argument than SL does. The premise and conclusion in SL had nothing to do with each other. In QL, they both use the predicate I, which means that they're both about who will get ice cream. Predicates are things that you can say about objects. You can make a predicate by starting with a complete sentence and removing a noun phrase from it, replacing it with a kind of blank. For example, blank will get ice cream. Sally will get blank. Blank is happy. Blank is the capital of New York State. These are all predicates. In QL, we use capital letters to symbolize predicates. When we write a symbolization key, we also use variables, x, y, or z, instead of blanks. Importantly, x is not a thing. It's a variable or placeholder. It tells you how many lowercase letters you need after the predicate in order to express a complete thought. For example, with i, you need one lowercase letter to say who it is that will get ice cream. With s, you need one lowercase letter to say what it is that Sally will get. With h, you need one lowercase letter to say who is happy. And with c, you need one lowercase letter to say what it is that is the capital of New York State. This is especially important because we can have multiplace predicates, which express relations between things. For example, we might let nxy mean x is to the north of y, or lxy mean x is less than y. 
These are two-place relations. To express a complete thought, n requires two lowercase letters, and it means that the first is to the north of the second. We can also have three-place relations. For example, b, x, y, z could mean x is between y and z. So the capital letters in QL are predicate letters. We can add subscripts to make new predicates, so we have as many as we need. In addition to A, B, C, and so on, we have B1, B2, whatever else we need. Constants are singular terms that pick out individuals. For example, Sally, John Cleese, Poughkeepsie, the capital of New York. In QL, we use lowercase letters. So we might let little s stand for Sally, little j stand for John Cleese, little p be Poughkeepsie, and little a be the capital of New York. Importantly, only the letters a through w are constants. The letters x, y, and z are variables. Variables serve as placeholders rather than being names for specific things. If we need more than 23 constants or more than three variables, we can use subscripts. So we can add numbers to distinguish a1, a2, a3, or x1, x2, x3. In addition, QL will have the connectives and parentheses that we already know from SL. And it will also have two new logical operators called quantifiers. The upside down A is called the universal quantifier. It translates expressions like all and every. That's why we used it earlier when translating everyone likes ice cream. The backwards E is called the existential quantifier. It translates English expressions like sum, there exists, and at least one. We'll get more detail into how quantifiers work in the next video. When you're entering sentences of QL into Carnap, the keyboard equivalents for all of the sentential operators are exactly the same as they were in SL. Because there isn't an upside down A or a backwards E on your keyboard, Carnap takes the regular capital A as the universal quantifier, or a capital E as the existential quantifier. In QL, capital A and capital E are predicate letters. Lowercase v is a constant. In Carnap, however, we use those as keyboard equivalents. So capital A becomes the upside down A, capital E becomes the backwards E, and lowercase v is used as the wedge for disjunction. This results in a small technical issue. Suppose you want to type the sentence IS or IT into Carnap. You can type the OR using a backslash and a slash, like this. You can also type the OR using a lowercase v, but if you type capital I, lowercase s, lowercase v, capital I, lowercase t, Carnap will read that lowercase v as the constant v, and it will read this as something that's just not really a sentence of QL, that it's not grammatically correct. To make it clear to Carnap that you're using the lowercase v as a disjunction, as the wedge, meaning or, you need to put spaces on either side of it. So if you type is, leave a space, v, space, it, Carnap will know what you mean. So you're welcome to continue using lowercase v for disjunction, but just remember that when it's next to other letters, you want to leave a space between it and the letters that it's next to, so that Carnap will know that you mean a disjunction. This video has covered limitations of SL, which led us to want more expressive power, so we introduced the language QL. It's introduced the basic building blocks of QL, which are predicates and constants, and it's introduced all of the symbols that we get in QL. In the next video, 
we'll start putting those pieces together to start translating sentences from English into QL.